Hey y'all, Data Guy here, and in kind of continued celebration of me having access now to a Google Cloud account that I can use, um, I am working on my backload of uh, promised videos related to Google Cloud, um, and continuing that today with a video on how you can set up an ETL pipeline with Google BigQuery. Um, so I want to make a video on doing ETL with BigQuery, Google Cloud Storage, um, and then also an ELT pipeline in a future video where I'm going to show you how to do uh, use BigQuery and DBT together. Uh, but today, going into ETL. So without further ado, let's get started. And we're going to get started by creating ourselves a new blank Astro or Astro Runtime repository, so just local version of Airflow. We're going to run on Docker Desktop. Um, so for that, we're going to CD into Desktop. Airflow repos, and then we're going to make directory. Uh, let's go GCP ETL. Love my acronyms today. CD into that, and then we're going to run Astro Dev init to just create all the files we we'll need for the local environment of Airflow. Then open this environment up in VS Code. So go to Airflow environment. GCP ETL. Open this up here, and boom! Now we have a local Airflow environment. And then to actually get started with this, what we'll need to do. So the first thing we're going to do to customize this environment, to make sure we have everything we need, is just install a whole list of requirements and packages. So here, not just the HTTP providers, silly me, don't just need that. We need all of these. So the Google providers, um, I'm going to bring in the Slack provider just for sending out notifications um, for fun. And then pandas. Uh, for creating and manipulating data frames, requests for requesting data from an API. So I'm just going to use some basic API endpoints to get the data from uh, as an example. And then also the BigQuery and storage specific packages for the operators that will allow us to basically use their Python clients for interacting with BigQuery and Google Cloud Storage respectively. Uh, so we'll just save this and then go into our DAGs folder and create our DAG. So let's call this ETL GCP, do a little inversion there on the name of the project. Um, and then we can really just get started building our DAG out here. Um, and the first part, <clears throat> most fun part of every single DAG, of course, is to bring in all of our requirements and packages and all that fun stuff. So we have our DAG and task deck graders, our days ago dates util, a Google Cloud storage hook, a BigQuery hook, a Slack webhook hook, um, and then we also have the requests package. This is for requesting interact with APIs, JSON, similarly for parsing the data we're gonna get from those APIs, uh, OS for interacting with system level operations and also uh, writing things to logs, um, pandas for interacting, creating data frames, so everyone knows pandas knows, um, and then BigQuery here, this operator for interacting with BigQuery um, through the Google Cloud, through the official operator there. Um, so those are all our packages and requirements imported, all set up. So now we can actually start building a DAG. So the first thing we're gonna do, just right at the top of our DAG, is just set some default arguments for our DAG. Um, and then what we'll do is just define the DAG, and we're gonna use the Tassel API, best practices here, um, of course. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually just extract data from a few different APIs um, in a list. And you could use dynamic task mapping here as well if you wanted to just use the dot .expand method um, and pass in API URLs. I'm just gonna use um, this kind of for loop here for fun um, because it'll just be a little bit easier um, for my purposes. Uh, but here, just results, so basically passing on a list of API URLs, um, saving the results from each of those API requests, um, and then we're also going to find a send Slack alert function for if an API request fails, so that's why this is grayed out right now. So basically just getting all the data and then combining all those results and saving them locally. So here, um, after we've added all those results, so this results basically going to be a dictionary of those JSON uh, request responses, and then we're going to re append them all together and then dump them all uh, at the same time into this temporary API combined data JSON file. Um, so make sure you have enough local file storage to handle that. Um, and then once we're done with that, just return the local file path so we can reference that downstream and further tasks. Um, and then our second task is just going to be loading that raw data into the uh, our Google Cloud Storage bucket. So here, loading data into GCS, local file path, bucket name, object name, um, and we're gonna use the GCS hook, upload with all those three different variables there, um, and then return the built uh, file path. So this is just gonna be the object storage location of that combined file location. Um, and then what we'll do after that is actually do some data validation before processing. So now that we have it in 
that Google Cloud Storage bucket. We're gonna run this validation task. So here, validate data, use the Google Cloud Storage hook. Um, and then here, we're just gonna build that uh, bucket name again, splitting it so we can actually use this dynamically to go through if we actually want to have multiple buckets or multiple different data sets. Then here, we're gonna download the data from GCS, load that data uh, as API data here, um, and then check to make sure that the data has all the required fields. So making sure it has every single entry within that API data has all of the data that is contained within there. So there can be no null values within those fields. Um, if anything fails, we're gonna send a Slack alert that their state validation has failed, raise the value error and mark that task as failed. Otherwise, we're going to return the GCS URI that that data actually has been validated and it is a success. When you guys would not gonna bring that data back into the GCS storage bucket because we don't need to. Um, it's already sitting there, we're just downloading it there to actually do data validation um, rather than needing to upload it back into the Google Cloud storage bucket. So the next step we're gonna have here is a transform data and aggregate it task. Um, so you know, if you have different logic for how you wanna transform and aggregate your data, feel free to sub this out. But I wanted to just incorporate a pretty standard step um, you know, in an ETL workflow where you're transforming before uploading it is saying, hey, let's aggregate the number of APIs per category or the number of entries per, you know, so say you have a list of users of different types. This is what's going to help you aggregate them into groups based on those types um, and then save that aggregated data so it's easier to search, easier to query. This is a very, very simple transformation, as I'm sure anyone that is into data engineering will know. Um, but this is representative you know, of something you would do, just simple transformations to make the data easier to upload into its eventual location, um, rather than you know, a lot of times, in the previous paradigm, you would do a lot of big transformations before uploading it into your database. But now, because it's easier to run those operations in your database, you just wanna make sure that data is relatively clean can be easily uploaded and then you can do kind of that more complex transformation once it's actually in your BigQuery environment. So now that we've gotten that all set up, um, we're then going to finally load the data into BigQuery and here we're going to implement imp incremental loading as well. Um, so, you know, a lot of times you're using really large data sets, you'll either want to load it in steps or using Airflow, you can load it in parallel. Um, so you, what you could do is use a dot expand method on this and actually have it go in iterate say, hey, for these chunks of this data set, upload them all in parallel. Um, it really just depends on what you wanna do here. I'm running this on my local machine now, so because the local executor can't run in parallel, there's not really any benefit to that. So that's why I'm just kind of running these uh, all as independent tasks. So here, load data to BigQuery, we're using that BigQuery hook again, initiating a BigQuery client, and then loading that transform data from our Google Cloud Storage bucket. So here we have our object name again, uploading um, the GCS hook, so loading our transform data. Um, and then here we have our load job config. So here we're passing the definition for how we're going to load our job into BigQuery with these uh, field of category and API count. Um, so just basic entry uh, data points for you know, our API data. Um, and then here source format. So making sure you use whatever format your data is coming in. In our case, it's new line and linear JSON where we just converted it straight from JSON into a data frame. And then we're gonna use the write disposition, which is just the method of how you want to upload your data into your database, um, whether you want to overwrite or append. In this case, we want to keep our existing data and then append new records into there. Um, and then we're going to define our URI again. And then now that we have our job config set up, we have our GCS bucket defined. We're going to define the load table, table from URI. So load from that Google Cloud Storage URI in this load job. And then we'll have this load job dot result. So it'll wait for that job to complete and then post the results of that job into our logs. So we'll see if it failed or succeeded. And then after that, we're going to have a just you know quick return data. Hey, it was successful. And this is where that data was loaded to with data set ID and a table ID. Um, and then last step here uh, is really just to define alerts and kind of tie it all off. So here, what we're gonna do is just define a Slack alert here using the Slack webhook. So I prefer Slack, some people like Teams. Slack has a really good integration with Airflow though. So if you're using Airflow, just adding Slack or Teams, go with Slack. Um, and then so here you have the Slack webhook hook, Slack webhook, send that message. Um, and then you have a list of API endpoints here as well. So these are just any APIs that you want to actually uh, query against. So I just use some very public APIs um, and classic example ones I like to use. And then finally, we'll define all of our dependencies. 
So here, local file path, extract the data from that list of multiple APIs. So you can substitute your own APIs in there. Then we're gonna load that data to GCS. So building that GCS bucket, uh, the actual JSON uh, location of where we're gonna save that. So defining that object storage location, then passing that generated URI into the validated GCS URI. So just knowing it's validated, it's really just the same URI because we don't make any changes. Um, and then transforming, aggregating that data, giving that new file path as an output to the load data to BigQuery, which then uses that loaded file path or that aggregated file path to then load into your data set and your table within BigQuery for just instantiating the DAG down here. Um, and you can just use Google Cloud default connection with a uh, workload at any role that has access to all of these. I have many videos on how to set that up, but that is all I got to show you today. Um, I just want to make a quick video on how to do an ETL job in BigQuery. Now I have access to it, so I'll keep the Google content coming. If you have any other things you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below, and have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.